Now, almost 10 million people tuned in to watch history being made last night with the first of the live prime ministerial debates. Let's get more on that with John Sopel, who is at Westminster. John. Sophie, thanks very much. Yes, here at Westminster, it's the morning after the night before, and the Liberal Democrat leader, Nick Clegg, is enjoying the accolades of a clear victory, at least in snapshots of public opinion. Though how that translates over the next three weeks, well, that's still unclear. This morning, the Conservative leader, David Cameron, said he'd enjoyed the experience and agreed that the Lib Dem leader had had a good debate. Gordon Brown said he believes the debate will have energised the campaign. In a moment, reaction from the three main parties. But first, here's our political correspondent, Gary O'Donoghue. Back on the campaign trail after their historic debate in Manchester. But of the three, this man has cause to be the happiest today, with the instant polling making him the clear winner. Having successfully portrayed himself as the outsider, Nick Clegg managed to appear the most relaxed of the three. But today was playing it all down. Well, I think it is just the beginning. I mean, you know, there's quite a way to go until, the, uh, until people have uh, their say in the ballot box, which is the most important moment of all. And um, I think leaders, the leaders' debate yesterday was an important step, but it was the beginning of the campaign proper. Election debate. The hour-and-a-half debate drew a TV audience of more than nine million, more than EastEnders and Coronation Street. And the ban on applause, booing and cheering didn't seem to make it stilted or flat. Go Clegg on as, as the Mr. Prime Clegg now. You are going to take not money sure out of not the sure if you're like me. Know that. Thank not you, Mr. Brown. Mr. Clegg. I'm not sure if you're like me, but the more they attack each other, the more they sound exactly <laughs> the same. One seasoned American pollster was watching the three men carefully. They saw the Prime Minister as they've always seen him, very factually based, very statistical. They saw David Cameron in not quite as good as they were expecting. Some effective lines, particularly on crime and immigration but not as loose and open as he has been in the past. And they were really surprised, pleasantly surprised by Nick Clegg. The Tory leader was at a school this morning launching a music initiative. But the one they were really here to see was this man. Take that's Gary Barlow. On the debate, though, David Cameron had some generous words for his Liberal Democrat opponent. I think he had a very good debate, but the great thing is it's really an opportunity to say what you think about the issues. Uh, of course, there's always going to be a bit of uh, ding-dong on the, on the stage, but the real, the real opportunity, and what I think people really want, is, you know, what are you going to do for my local hospital? How will my school be better? How are you going to control immigration? The opportunity to answer those questions, not having to do a 30-second soundbite on the news. The Prime Minister had his own celebrity in tow this morning, the comic Eddie Izzard. I think Gordon was sticking it to David Cameron and saying... But speaking in a radio interview earlier, it was put to the Prime Minister that he'd come third in the debate. I'm not uh, um, uh, going to complain about uh, you know, what people say about me and performance and all that. I really do think it comes down to the substance. While it's clear Nick Clegg got the upper hand in this debate, we won't know for a few days whether it's made any difference to the way people plan to vote. And even if it does, it's far from certain that effect will last. There are two more of these debates. Plenty of time for things to change. Gary O'Donoghue, BBC News, Westminster. Well, also watching closely last night were the leaders of the parties not included in the debates. Well, here's how the UK Independence Party, the SNP and Plaid Cymru reacted this morning. Quite apart from the democratic outrage of not allowing the, the voices of Scotland and Wales to be present in an election debate, I also think it was a grave mistake not to allow the audience to participate and to shut the people out of a debate. I mean, after all, the people are meant to decide elections. Once again, the three big parties have entirely ignored the people of Wales. There's nothing there about our priorities, about our pensioners, about a fair deal for Wales so that we can look after our schools and hospitals and our jobs. Nothing there about the needs of protecting the most vulnerable when the cuts are coming. This had nothing to say to me or the communities I represent. There were three people on that platform who were fiddling while Rome burns. I mean, we were talking about immigration and at no point did anybody mention EU immigration. They constantly talked about non-EU immigration disregarding the fact that there's been a million EU migrants in this country since 2004, which is undercutting British workers and driving down wages. Well, here joining me to discuss how their leaders performed, uh, the Cabinet Office Minister Tessa Jal, uh, Shadow Defence uh, Secretary uh, Liam Fox and Foreign Affairs Spokesman for the Liberal Democrats, Ed Davey. Uh, Ed Davey, everyone's giving it to your man. Does it make any difference, though, over the course of a three-week campaign that he had one good debate? 
I don't think we know yet, do we? The only poll that really counts is the one where people get to vote and decide